Okay. Um, sometimes uh, we always want to write our thoughts or do journalism, but some invisible hands always stops us from doing it. Or sometimes we don't have the enough courage to do so or have continuous self-doubt or procrastinate a lot. Um, as Charles Dickens once said, procrastination is thief of time. So we all procrastinate more or less in our daily lives, sometimes leading a major delays or stress um, before the deadlines. Uh, um, hello, everyone. Welcome to another live session of Ichigo Ichi. I'm your host, Amrin, today. By now, we all know Ichigo Ichi means Ichigo Ichi is a Japanese um, saying that refers to a live interacting series where authors, entrepreneurs, and instructors from around the globe join and teach the audience by discussing specific topics and sharing valuable insights along, the, along with creating awareness. This is season two, episode 10, and with us, we have our lovely guest, Amrit Reedy and she will be helping us out with student journalist confidence and procrastination. So Amrit Reedy is a 21 years old student and an aspiring journalist from Nottingham, England, and she has a great passion for writing. And so she worked on developing her written skills over the past few years, which has been quite the journey. She has been the former editor of her university magazines and variety of publications she writes for. She usually writes about music-based topics and has interest in motorsports currently. Uh, currently, uh, she is a coaster for a female Formula One podcast. So let's welcome our lovely guest today. Thank you, Riddhi, for taking our time with us. And we are so excited to learn more from you. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Amrit, as said before. Thank you so much for the opportunity for hosting the talk. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to sort of talk to you all about my experience as a student journalist so far and the industry and what I've learned. Um, can you show the slides, please? Um, so yeah, as said before, this talk is sort of about the journalism industry as a whole, my experience with it, um, tips which I've acquired from other journalists, um, established ones, and sort of how to find confidence and battle procrastination, because I think it can be quite a tough industry to get into. Um, the next slide, please. Um, so yeah, the agenda is that it will be split into sort of four sections. So first going over journalism, because I think when I was younger I had, I just sort of thought it was the people you saw on TV presenting the news and then going into university I found that it was such a broad um, like nature of work and especially nowadays there's so many different sections to it with the growth of social media. The second uh, section will be on time management and procrastination and how to sort of fight feelings of um, as if you can't hack it alongside your normal work and studies and then sort of tips on what I've learned to develop my writing skills and to develop confidence um, in writing articles and then finally sort of fighting feelings of doubt and gaining motivation in general to sort of think this is my passion and I'm going to do it regardless of anything. Um, the next slide please. Yeah, so this part is on the broad nature of journalism. Um, the next slide, please. So the industry is quite big. It's split into writing online articles, print articles, broadcast, and now social media-based fields. So with the rise of TikTok and Twitter spaces, you, so much information can be given to such a broad variety of people across the world which is what makes it such a powerful industry and I'd say that with the growth of um, the industry with it being so broad now I'd say, say to try loads of different fields because it is not just writing like I went into it thinking I feel like I'm only comfortable to do writing then I ended up doing a podcast on the radio which I never ever would have thought I would have done um, and I guess trying all of these different fields make sure that you know what you like and that you're in the right path for what you want to do because it's easy to like switch and switch between different fields and sort of 
find what you want to do and manage different things at different times because you can sort of do a radio podcast set that up quite easily now with streaming platforms such as Spotify and gain listeners on there then use that to sort of promote your own articles related on a separate either a separate topic or related to what you're hosting about and I think there are different routes into the industry, which I didn't realise myself. So I didn't do a journalism undergraduate. I've just graduated, but I studied English and history, which is quite different to what I've ended up doing for my career. And it's only through um, societies and extracurriculars that I got really into the industry. So I sort of started off just thinking, oh, I can only write because I got into it because I was an English student. I liked writing and I thought, I'm only comfortable with doing writing but then I it was during lockdown and the first wave of the pandemic where I sort of pushed myself to go for a more editorial role which I loved and I've carried on doing that since um since 2020 and then this year my friend really wanted to start a podcast on the radio which is something which I was quite nervous about because broadcast and public speaking is something which I hadn't experienced a lot but then I think going into it in inside like a university environment is good because you have your peers supporting you and people in the same boat. But if you if you've already graduated and aren't in university anymore, there are a lot of other ways that you can go about it. So I think freelancing is the main thing which has which is the main tip which I've got from other journalists. So there's so many publications across the world where you can pitch ideas to and um sort of get your foot in the door about different topics whether it's music sport fashion food anything and I'm also then the next route that I'm doing is I'm doing a master's degree um because I graduated my undergrad and I think that is a great way to get your training as well because the industry does has have a lot of like legal sides so I'm doing this to get media law training and I think that doing extra studies is a great way to sort of break into it and also it makes me feel as because I quite I'm quite an anxious person at the best of times so it sort of makes me feel reassured in my skills that I've got the qualification behind me and that's sort of like a broad overview of the industry and how I got into it and next steps and whatever um the next slide please Um, so yeah I say from that the main tip which I'd have is building a portfolio and these are because I'm by no means that experienced at all or a pro like established like I'm still a student journalist so these are tips which I've been told from other established journalists and tips which I found out myself along the way so as I said before I'd say experience is the best to find out what you want to do in the field um, because it is so broad and there's so much you can do and the good thing is that you can bounce with freelancing you don't have to stay writing forever you don't have to stay hosting forever but experience is also something which helps you to feel as if you can put your ideas in the world and there's not a mental block between sort of writing on the page and putting it out into the world for example because I feel like that's what was a barrier for getting me into journalism earlier I thought oh I feel really nervous for everyone to read like what I want what I want to say but I think building a portfolio and having more than one piece of work sort of makes me feel more established as a writer in myself um, and also on a variety of topics because it shows that like you have a lot of sides to your journalism style and I'd say that reaching out to publications and editors using social media e and email is a great tool because we live in the 21st century sort of driven by technology and Twitter, LinkedIn, it's such a great place to find work and to sort of find people who can help you as well like I wouldn't I would say don't feel scared to sort of reach out to people and just ask for advice because networking is good to sort of get jobs but also just to get help on the way because I feel like I felt I couldn't ask people but then I just sort of would dm people and they'd be nice because everyone's been in the same boat that's what I always say to myself that everyone's been in the same shoes so having like a mental block feeling as if you're not good enough to get people's advice is something which you should get rid of like you don't need to have that mental block um and using social media I think 
it means that you have to be sort of professional online and be aware of your presence online. That's a tip which I've got from other people um, because at the end of the day, like with journalism, it's a very media based thing. People can find you easily on the internet. So sort of keep in the back of your mind, be aware of your presence online. And also a portfolio is great because at the end of the day, you get into journalism through a passion and through wanting to do it. So collating all your work into one place, like an art portfolio, for example, if you do art in your spare time, it's a great way to sort of show your what you're passionate about. And it's part of your personality at the end of the day, like you're really passionate on these topics. So it's great to sort of build an established portfolio, whether that be online, um, on LinkedIn or like an in-person one. Um, the next slide, please. So that's sort of just a broad overview of the industry. This section is about tips which I've sort of, things which I've struggled with throughout university, especially with time management and battling procrastination. Cause I do think that it is sort of a journey to get to a point where you feel like you can manage two things at once because I was doing my degree which is completely different to what I was trying to do as a career but I think at the end I was benefited from having to manage my time and it sort of helped me manage um seeing friends and family and it's a great way to just sort of I just think the earlier you learn to manage your time it's easier for you to manage in the long run doing what you love Next slide, please. So some time management tips, which I have found along the way is that starting out in the industry is something which you do in your spare time, but it's something which can be extremely manageable. So obviously it's not your first priority when you first start out. I had to remember that I was paying to do a degree and I've got my studies alongside it and I'm doing this because I love it. Like it's not turning to my full-time paid job yet. That's what I thought, especially my final year. And because of this, I thought prioritization is the key thing. And my tip for this is sort of diaries, to-do lists. I love all of that. Like just managing hour by hour, even what you're gonna do each day into manage manageable chunks and remembering to get important tasks done first. Because for example, if you really want to write this article on like a new album that's come out where you've got an essay due in, you need to put your priorities straight and do the essay. But then I think also doing too much of what you love can sort of take the fun out of it as well. So I try to sort of manage my time as if I'm not doing too much of my writing. And it's because when I do that, it does feel like it's turned into a chore if it's something which I feel bad for doing if I've got other work to do. So looking at it as a hobby does help. You think I do this because I love it. I don't want anything to take my passion away from it. And also remembering that even though you're writing this and you might be worried about what other people might say about it, you're doing it because you love it. Like you shouldn't worry about what other people have to say about it. That's just another tip, which I thought I'd throw in there. Um, but yeah, time management is great to sort of not only manage your time with your other studies and other priorities and other work but to also manage mentally how you manage hobbies alongside other things in life um, the next slide please so procrastination is something which we all experience and the uh, the definition in the dictionary is that it's the action of delaying or postponing something with the little subtitle needs being your tip is your first tip is to avoid procrastination which is something which we've all had said to us in life I've said it by my mum when I've been procrastinating revising in the past by teachers in classrooms and they can see people aren't working and so it's more sort of delaying the unpleasant tasks but it can still happen with something that we love and a lot of psychological research has gone into sort of why we procrastinate and I think and in a lot of it is down to a fear of getting started, psychologists have found, because I think with overwhelming tasks, it can be a bit scary to start off with. So I've had that before where I've had an article for a publication and I'm quite nervous about how it will turn out. So I just put it off, put it off, put it off. Um, and it, so it can still happen with something you love, even though definably it's about delaying unpleasant tasks. So I think that 
it's important to manage procrastination because I've learned throughout the past three years especially my degree that it can lead to burnout like there's been times where I've felt like I've left everything to the last minute and even though I haven't sort of done it mentally I feel burnt out because I feel like I've done it in my head because I've thought about it so much and because of this doctors have found that side effects can include increased stress levels problems sleeping um sort of putting things off in most areas in life which is something which you do want to avoid but procrastination is a feeling felt by everyone in most situations which we can all relate to and it's definitely not just constrained to sort of extracurricular hobbies or certain fields of work and um, the next slide please and so battling procrastination is extremely important because you don't want to feel burnt out or that you don't want to do something that you love so similarly to before I feel like to-do lists and diaries and time management and scheduling in time like to reward yourself by sort of chilling watching a film seeing friends after after doing tasks in the day um, is a great way to sort of manage your time and to take a break away and so throughout the pandemic we've all done sort of remote working and working from home which can be hard because you can't separate your work and your relaxing time and especially throwing in another thing on top of it like writing or a journalism when you already might feel nervous enough about doing it in the first place if you have the mental block stopping you from writing or broadcasting that can be quite um, daunting and might make you think oh I don't want to do it at all but I think breaking tasks down is a way to not only break a barrier of feeling scared to get into a certain type of career, but also to healthily manage it. So, for example, if you have a column you really want to write about your favourite books um, of the year, don't plan to write loads and loads of like that series in one day. You can think oh, I can write one a week and by the end of the year I'll have 50 52 articles of this series and like a regular thing and so you don't have to think oh I need to be so successful I need to write so much all the time like that is not the healthy way to go about it so practicing kindness and self-compassion to yourself is great to sort of be healthy in the way that you manage your hobbies and passions and in a productive way because anything you do looking at it in that way you'll still get a productive output and the quality of your work will be a lot better I found um like quality over quantity is better and so I've done this by doing sort of dedicated journalism days I call them so in my third year in my degree um managing um essays and my university side of work which I procrastinated a lot more on than my hobbies and passions and journalism I'd sort of give myself Monday to Friday to do my work for my degree and then the weekends I was like I can just write whatever I want broadcast whatever I want because it's still a hobby at the end of the day and I think that's the great thing about the journalism industry is that you go into it because it's a passion it's a hobby and you're making your own career out of it and I use productivity apps such as Forest for this. So we all know phones and technology can be a great, great distraction. Um, so setting a timer on your phone where you can't touch it for a certain amount of time is great to get tasks done, especially in this world. I think we've got so many distractions at every corner, especially since I've been living with my friends for the past two years. It's been like you just want to hang out with them all the time. But then managing everything, make sure time to relax even more even better and more enjoyable and also another thing which I coined my friends is a term called productive procrastination which you call it so say if you're not writing something or um, hosting something you can just do something which you still class as productive like reading other people's articles because at the end of the day like you should explore the field that you want to work in and see other people's styles and approach to topics that you're tackling and it doesn't have to be writing 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 all the time the research behind it and getting seeing how other people um react in the way to the in the way in in a way to topics that you're covering is great and can be extremely useful to help develop your own skills the next slide please and so 
developing skills is something which I thought would be helpful to talk about, um, whether this be for writing, broadcasting, etc. Next slide, please. Um, so I think my main tip would be to have a unique angle, which comes from researching the field, which I've found and which is something which other journalists have said to me. They just said to read around the areas which you're interested in writing about and see how can I approach this topic in a unique way, which is true, which gives me my own voice in the field, because there are so many people with blogs and um radio shows and podcasts that it can be quite a crowded market so sort of having your own approach to this is something which could make you um have a wider reach on your articles um but fact checking is something which also is key to do so if you're quoting something or um writing something you need to make sure that it is true and people don't have any like issues with you putting it in um I'd say that being well researched in that sense is good because it gives your work more breadth. And I think that especially if you want to be sort of a news based journalist, that is important. And again, reading and listening to other people's work is good to get these unique angles. And also, again, to do with the mental block, which I um talked about earlier which I felt I realized that having sort of an assured tone and confidence in my own arguments and what I'm saying is very good to sort of get past the mental thing in your head which stops you from writing because if you have something to say you should feel like you're comfortable enough to say it and I think that even though it was for me putting that my first article out was extremely scary but after doing that it felt a lot lot better and I felt a lot more assured to write on different topics and think even if someone has a problem with it I'm saying my own truth and what I think so I'm putting that out there and also I think that you need power in the headline of the article to make people want to read it but you have to keep journalistic integrity to avoid too much clickbait um, as you'll see in the next slide uh, next slide please so this example is sort of about Josh, with the Olivia Rodrigo and Joshua Bassett situation, there was this is something which I found as a more entertainment based journalist myself, um, which had a lot of clickbait titles. So the first one says Joshua Bassett says he nearly died after Olivia Rodrigo released driver's license, whereas the second one says Joshua Bassett was hospitalized for heart failure and septic shock after Lie 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 release. And you see that obviously. The first one is very clickbait release, almost blaming Olivia Rodrigo in a sense for his health conditions, which was not the case if you read the whole interview. And the second one is taking a more um, professional approach, which should be taken, I think. And especially in nowadays, you see so many clickbait tweets and everything that it's good to avoid that. And don't feel pressured into writing something just so dramatic just to get the views and the clicks. Because I feel like sometimes I feel like, oh, I've not been so harsh as this person has when I've written something, but I've kept true to myself and I knew, know that I wouldn't want to like just slander someone for no reason because that is not true to how I want to write. Um, next slide, please. And so the main, final and main part of this talk is sort of about motivations and feelings of doubt, which is something which everyone experiences. And personally, I have felt that at times because it can be quite a hard space to get into. And I am still getting into it and building a career um, as I'm still a student journalist. But there are tips which I've learned along the way to sort of make me feel more confident in the scene and to make me realize that I'm doing this because I love it and I don't care what other people think in a sense that's what you've got to think at the end of the day next slide please um so building confidence in the industry it can feel extremely overwhelming to start with but as I said remember why you started I think that's something which has been told to me quite a lot um so I got into journalism through my university magazine because I like I was into music and films and everything and I thought oh I really want to see how I can sort of review this and put my thoughts out there and my first ever article was a film review of Paul Feig's adaptation of Last Christmas 
um, which I don't I don't think was my best work at all. But um, putting it out there, I felt I remember I felt so scared. But then seeing sort of friends and family say, "Oh, this is really good. Like you should be proud of yourself." Those little moments are what sort of made me feel confident to carry on writing. And then by the end, I just like write things, and then I wouldn't even post about them. I just feel like so comfortable that I could just put them out there and it is quite easy to get to that step I think when you're writing about something which you like and then also remember that a lot of people are in the same boat especially in journalism um, I found that as an ethnic minority in journalism as a woman of colour as well it is sort of like a male dominated scene which um, is a bit of a barrier when you're trying to break into it like career wise that's there's no doubt about that and a lot of people would agree with me but a lot of people are in the same boat and there's people which you can talk to to sort of relate to and there are ways to get into it I would say that the scene is broadening and but a lot of work needs to be done but that shouldn't put you off if you're really really passionate and I think trying to fight through that even makes you even stronger especially if you're really passionate and also remember that you have to start off smaller. So I'm still doing voluntary roles and that's quite easy to get just to build up your portfolio, especially if you're going to do a master's to build up your skills and et cetera. And also my main thing is don't compare your path to someone else's because everyone has different journeys. Everyone has different experiences, different backgrounds. Um, so what you're doing shouldn't be compared to someone else's. Um, experience and I do think that in the industry it does take time to build confidence um, because it is such a broad industry there's different roles popping up every day different things you can write about all the time but I think it is quite fun to write and if you have mental blocks while writing just think I'm doing this because I love it and I don't want to let this go just because of what other people might think next slide please so keeping motivated finally is what i think is a uh, good tips to sh good tips to give um so ways to keep motivated when experiencing moments of self doubt um just think we all experience these moments and i think self doubt is something which is so personal and people experience it in different ways and i've personally experienced it by thinking oh this person's done so much more than me or this and this person's attacked this topic in a completely different way than me it's so much better but just remember that especially with writing it's such a personal thing and everyone does it differently and even though you may experience self-doubt just think that person probably thinks the same as you like just because people don't show it people are sort of insecure about what they um put out there still and also remember again that you started out of enjoyment and that's sort of the thing which I know my, brought myself and a lot of my friends into wanting to write and going to journalism. And also taking breaks is good, um, which I've had to force myself to do at times because that doesn't also just help with your creativity. It helps with avoiding burnout mentally and burnout from procrastination, which was mentioned before. So remembering to schedule in breaks. And even if you feel like, oh, I've done so much of this, I need like a week off to sort of refresh and sort of reset that is fine to do like you don't have to feel like you have to write every second of the day to be successful like that's just crazy um and also as I said before everyone has different journeys into the industry so don't compare yours to someone else's and finally just don't be scared to even post your work or post it on Instagram or Twitter because a you'll get wider engagement b it's something which you you should be proud of at the end of the day so yeah um just finally just like just let go of any doubts and just do it I think it's a great thing to do I was so scared to sort of put my work into the world to start with but I just thought I'll just do it and now I love writing and podcasting and everything um next slide please so thank you so much for listening um for to my talk uh luckily there wasn't too much work from building noise outside I was quite worried there'd be a lot of background noise that we were fine um yeah so 
I can be reached at email amritverdyfreelance at gmail.com and on Twitter and Instagram. And I also have my work in an online portfolio. Um, but thank you so much for the opportunity for this talk. Uh, it was an amazing session, really. Man, it was really uh, informative. As myself, I might start a writing career, so it was really informative for me also. And <clears throat> as you shared your valuable uh, session with us, so um, oh. part of the team, Batho, um, do you want to add something? I'm sorry, you cut out a bit there on my side, oh. your sound. Oh, yeah. As a part, you shared your story with us. So do you want to add something about Team Batho? Our um, work was seen. I loved what Team Bertho do. I think you're such like a dedicated organization and you spread sort of great awareness on different important topics. And I never would have got like an opportunity to do something like this if you hadn't reached out to me as well. So I love that you sort of reach out to people who you see online and take the time to like reach out to people and not just have pe people reach out to you like some other organizations do. Like you give people the opportunity like it gave me like a bit of confidence when you wanted me to do this i was like oh i'm doing something right so yeah i just want to say thank you for that yeah okay we have some questions uh, so what was the inspiration behind you on starting the writing career mainly um i think because when i was younger i'm like five years old and people would ask me what i wanted to be i'd say i wanted to be an author like writing books and that sort of changed like what i got I've read too many books for my English degree. I was like, I don't want to do fiction writing, but I still really like writing. And I've always loved music and always been into music. So I thought, why not just put the two together and write about music? So yeah, that's sort of how it started, even though I my first article was a film review, but I thought that's sort of a good broad thing to start with. And then I sort of narrow down a bit more after that but yeah because I do love writing like I did an English degree and I think it's sort of a good it was a good break for me when I was doing my degree to be able to write about something which wasn't related to English or history okay that's wonderful so I have this another question so some of uh, the students they don't actually uh, study the journalism for their degrees but mm -hmm. later on they grew the passion for it the writing so how can they self-learn it? How can they do it? Or, you know, is it possible or not? Yeah, that definitely is possible because that was sort of similar to what I did. Like, I, my university didn't offer a journalism degree. I did um, an English degree. And it was sort of just through, I, I think, going on Twitter and reading other people's work and listening to other people's work that really helped me to sort of think, oh, this is this type, type of style which I need to go for. And then I think just writing and putting your first thing out there is great. And then sending it to other people in the industry, like it's so easy on Twitter and LinkedIn. There's like, everyone just wants to connect with everyone because everyone's in the same boat and everyone's friendly. You can just ask for advice. Like, is this OK? Um, how would how could I improve this? Um, and also, yeah, not being afraid to reach out to people and ask questions because I've done that over the years. And even if you've graduated, it's still easy to get into like as a career because there's so many voluntary freelancing opportunities available who will just accept anyone Like you can just say, I really want to write about this, even if you've never written for before. And they'll, def they'll definitely still have you. So it is quite like, especially nowadays, a more accepting scene, easier to get into um, through voluntary roles. So that's what my advice would be. Okay, that's really nice. I have another question that is, um, some of us don't actually, you know, very introvert. They don't know how to approach people or actually don't know how to network. So how did you approach people or what's your advice on that? Um, for me, I sort of established Twitter and LinkedIn accounts um, more so. And then I literally, I remember my first time I tried to approach someone, I was so nervous, but I just sent a message to me like, hi, I really like your work. I'm really interested in getting a career in this or like an editor for a magazine, a like a small voluntary one. If you go for the big journalists, they won't reply. <laughs> so like go for like the smaller publications and they'll really they'll be really helpful they'll be like yeah um 
here are some tips, like here are some publications you can write for. So I think even if just sending like a message to loads of people, like, hi, I'm really interested in your publication. How do I get involved? I think that's a good way to do it. Okay, that was amazing. And it was really nice to have this session with you. And thank you everyone for joining today's session. I think it will be a really great edu educative and informative session for those who want to pursue their career in future journalism or writing. Thank you so much for having me. Yes.